Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for those of you who are tuning in on Facebook Live. We welcome you to our next installment of our virtual alumni engagement series. My name is Kelly Pfeiffer. I am our Vice President of Marketing Communications and Advancement here at Manor College, and today we are joined by um, an alum of, of the college, Karen O'Donnell, an alum from the class of 1990. And I have asked Professor Mary Sims, one of our longstanding esteemed faculty members, to join me in talking to Karen and hearing her story, her journey, and um, how she navigated law school, but got all of her foundations as a Manor Blue Jay. So thank you, Karen, for joining us today. And thank you, Professor Sims, for being with us. And um, Karen, can you give us a little bit of a, an introduction to yourself and then also how you heard about Manor and how you ended up um, working towards your associate degree? So first of all, thank you for having me. It's always a thrill to come back to, to Manor and see everyone, so thank you. Um, so I'm Karen O'Donnell and I am a owner partner at Stark & Stark. Um, I practice uh, personal injury and uh, catastrophic cases mostly. I'm a trial lawyer and I really like doing construction cases, uh, which is why you see these uh, hard hats behind me. So they're people who unfortunately were injured, but, you know, gave me their, their hard hats. So, um, so your question is, how did I get to Manor? So um, my story is a little bit, you know, different, I think, than most. And I did not want to go to Manor initially. So um, when I got out of high school, I had gone to a large state school. Um, and my friends were all going to these large schools. And I really did not know anything about Manor. Fast forward my first semester, and I was injured doing gymnastics at this school. And I had to come home and get surgeries. And my parents were basically like, well, you, you know, while you're healing, you should think about going to Manor. And I was like, I don't know this school. Nobody ever heard of this school. You know, it's a small school. And I was honestly feeling pressured to go to a big school because that's what all my friends were doing. So my mom had gone to Manor, which is why she was sharing um, that with me. And eventually I gave in and I showed up at Manor and I went through an orientation and I loved it. And it was for me that personalization. I mean, I had just come from a school where, you know, we sat a hundred in a classroom. They didn't know if you were there or not. And then to come to Manor where people actually knew your name, knew what program you were in, knew what classes you were attending and how you were doing and actually said hello to you by name was just like a shock to me. And, you know, the personalization that you get at Manor is really what roped me in. And I'm so grateful that my story and journey actually began at Manor. Yes, that, that's wonderful to hear. And I, I do love the, the, the honesty and the candor of, yeah, I didn't want to go there, but um, <laughs> I ended up there anyway. I think that's, that's great. And I hope that resonates with um, some of our students or even prospective students who are considering the college, but maybe doing it um, with a little bit of a push from a family member. Yeah, and I do think there's, there is a lot of pressure when you're in high school, um, you know, to hear these bigger names and, and now our name manner is, is becoming bigger as well. But again, the school is so personalized. I just think it's such an asset to manner college and to everyone that goes there. So, you know, I do think people feel pressured, but they should really be looking at manner. <laughs> yes, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Professor Sims, what questions do you have for Karen? Well, I was going to, the one big thing that I noticed teaching paralegal was that I wish I had gone before I went to law school. So I was going to, I was just going to ask you, no pressure, but did you feel that that really helped you when you went to law school, taking those courses in paralegal at Manor College? So, um, yeah, so just by way of background, when I did attend Manor, I, I went through, got associate's degree in my paralegal certificate. So, and then what happened for me from there is um, I went to the Wharton School of Business out of Manor, got my bachelor's degree, and then went to law school. So my whole journey um, was like a nine-year journey at the end of the day <laughs> between all the schools. 
uh, but matter was the foundation for that. So to answer your question, uh, Professor, when I got to law school, I felt like I was advanced. Mm -hmm. So Manor not only gave me that foundation, but I did an internship through Manor. Mm -hmm. So I had um, real world experience in the legal field before I got to law school. Um, and one of the things that I'm so grateful that Manor did is it's not just books. You know, it's not just here's what you read in a book. It was here's what you read in a book and here's how it applies to real life and what you may potentially do. And it was this scope like from beginning to end of like how the law works and how it applies in real life and here are different aspects of it. So by the time I got to law school and, you know, I'm going through a civil procedure class, I was like, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that same exact stuff at Manor, you know, so I did already feel advanced, but was grateful that I had the full kind of aspect of how the law works as well, like a, a real world application of that. Hmm. Yeah, and they, and it, they don't, and not everybody realizes this, but when you go to law school, it's general principles of law. It's not the laws of the state that the law school is in necessarily. So that's what they teach in paralegal also. So it's, you know, it does kind of coincide with that and gives you a heads up on all those landmark cases that you're going to see in law school. I thought that was, that's the one thing I kept saying, I wish I had gone to those classes uh, because it really helps even case briefing and things like that, you know, and did you work while you were in school? So I did. So um, Manor got me my first internship and I worked as a paralegal. Um, that firm ended up uh, hiring me and kept me on. And I worked there, I think, six years or so. Um, and I would work during the day and then I went to uh, the Wharton School at night. So, and when, during my internship, I used to leave Manor, jump on the train, go into Philly, do my internship. So, I mean, again, that was just a benefit that Manor offered that a lot of schools did not offer mm -hmm. um, that put me into the real world and just gave me that much more of an advantage, um, you know, when I ultimately decided this is where I would end up, so. Did you always think that you wanted to go to law school? I mean, was that your initial plan before you came to Manor, or was that something later you decided? You not so I did between? not, I did not have always have a plan to go to law school. And I think, you know, for new students who are looking at Manor, um, and I have a senior right now, and I think it's so unfair when someone says to a senior, like, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you know what you want to do? So I think what if I have advice to anyone to give, I would say you should look at what your interests are. Mm -hmm. And so my interest was always helping people. Like I knew I wanted to do something to help people. Um, and at first I wanted to be like a psychologist. You know, I went to school to be a psychology major and help people that way. And when, you know, that didn't work out, I was looking at, well, what else can I do to help people? And, you know, looking at Manor's paralegal program at that time, it was like, okay, well, if I can't help people in this sense, I can maybe help people in this sense, you know, help them with law and understanding and get them, you know, compensation that they may need or, or whatever they need through a legal aspect. So um, that's how I resulted to go to law school. So to answer your question, I didn't always know I wanted to go to law school, but I knew I always had an interest in helping people in some way, mm. you know, so I hope when people come to Manor, maybe that's something they look at. Like, do they want to help animals? Do they want to look at a, mm -hmm. a vet program, but maybe something within the vet program? So mm -hmm. I and think I that psychology really helped you too. Yeah. Learning psychology always <laughs> helps me as a parent now. <laughs> <laughs> I think Karen, what you said, what you said about um, you know, it's, it's really unfair when you ask a, a high school senior or, or you know, just a, a young adult, you know, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? It's, it's such a loaded question, but I thought your advice of giving just what are you interested in and kind of pursuing that a little bit further is really good. And I think something that's really great about Manor is that we are very much in a foundational um, education in, in all of our fields. Obviously, we have um, a wide variety of associate degrees and, and but we also have bachelors now, but just getting that foundation to then go, whether it's transfer, to go right into a career, 
it, but getting that foundations is so, so important. And um, I'm really grateful to hear that you felt that your foundations at Manor were really big stepping stones to then launch you to the Wharton School, to law school. That That's excellent. Is there anything, Karen, that you were involved with when you were a student? Did you do any student activities or any kind of extracurriculars um, or even volunteer opportunities that kind of came through Manor? So I remember working like at a pro bono clinic for a little bit. So I did take up on that opportunity. Again, it was just like a further opportunity to learn a different aspect of being a paralegal. Mm -hmm. So I ended up in personal injury and that was more like family, you know, so Manor did expose me and give me an avenue um, to that. Mm -hmm. So for me, and this would be advice that I would give other people. So I was kind of of the mindset, like you work hard and keep your nose down and you just work, work, work. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. If I look back, I wish I would have done more and have exposed myself more to the opportunities that Manor has, because, mm -hmm. you know, as you go on in life, it's about connections and it's mm -hmm. about knowing people. And, and I don't mean knowing people to necessarily further your career or get things. I mean, it's just about knowing people so you can maybe help them or mm -hmm. knowing what they're involved in to connect other people. And so I did really, I didn't really take advantage of that at Manor. Um, and there's so much to be offered there that I would really suggest to people that you make those connections and get involved. So having said that, the people that I were in class with, I still do talk to. Hmm. Um, you know, one has become an attorney as well. So who went through the paralegal program. Um, so, you know, those connections stay, but definitely, you know, networking and just learning different things is, is an aspect that Manor offers, um, you know, for people to get involved in. And I wish in hindsight that I would have done that more mm -hmm. because later in life, you know, now I'm on different boards and running around and meeting people. Um, but I wish I would have done it sooner. Mm -hmm. it's about relationships I always say it's about relationships too like your connection same thing I mean it's that you know you're 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 having in a relationship if I'm I'm helping a student I, I'm not just helping because it's my job I'm helping them because I want to see them be the best person they can be I have you know and I and often I talk to them after school you know like we're still talking all these you know so I mean we you know I mean it's really a good it's a good foundation to learn that people are, you know, not only can they be, uh, you know, helpful to you and, and you can learn from them, but they're, it's just good to have a good base of people. If you need something, you know who to call or, you know, or you also can give, you know, somebody, you can send somebody to them, so especially in, a, in, in the legal field. I do it all the time because, you know, it might not be something I do, but, you know, I know it's something you do, I send it to you, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. And it's not just, it, it's, it's all about, you know, somebody will take care of them. And, and those relationships are important, you know, that they go through life, really, you know, actually often, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, so that's great. And did you, um, if I could just ask you uh, about, so we're, we have another program, we have, you know, criminal justice and public policy, a lot of the students take that and want to go to law school. So I know eventually they're going to watch this video. Um, but I was wondering if you, I know there's no major for, for law school, you, you can have any major, but, uh, and you had business, which was also a very good one to have. Um, I had political science and, uh, you know, that was, that was when I went. So, uh, but what would you suggest to people um, that are thinking about going to law school about their major? So I would suggest just trying to, gain information on the different aspects of law um you know everybody sees these crime shows on tv and that you know criminal investigation and it's very intriguing um that type of law is very different than what i do for example like i do civil so i don't send people to jail um i seek compensation like if someone gets injured you know and they need future care i'm hopefully getting them compensated for like their future needs so some people you know, sit and look at contracts all day. I'm not, I realized very early on, I was not that person. Um, I ended up clerking for a judge and I sat in a library all day writing with like not talking to anyone and I couldn't stand that, right? <laughs> but at least I knew I couldn't stand that. So, you know, I do think people just need to 
learn about the different aspects to decide what their interests are and understand who they are as people. So if I ever, I knew I was never going to be good at that job and probably would never survive at that job just because I'm a people person. So that's why I'm a trial attorney. I like being up and talking to people and presenting things. So I would suggest, again, you know, kind of going back to relationships, just not necessarily seeking out relationships that are always going to benefit you, but seeking out relationships that give you information. And again, as you said, Professor, sometimes that information connects to other people, but you learn through that. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest just, you know, kind of doing your due diligence. And when you do have the courses that you go through, just trying to understand who you are and what your interests are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. That, that's great. I think the notion of like continually learning about yourself through your education is really, really strong. Um, I think a lot of our students certainly can resonate with that. So, so, so Karen, as someone who graduated in, in 1990, obviously you have seen Manor, um, not maybe as a student the whole time, but as a, an alumni and kind of being involved with Manor in a variety of ways. How have you seen the school change and evolve and kind of what's your perspective on that? I have seen um, the school just, I want to use the word grow, you know, and I don't mean necessarily grow where you've lost the personal touch, like grow in the sense that almost there's more of a personal touch, like the school is even more aware to students' needs, I think, and, you know, the economy and the atmosphere and interests. So I think the school has even become more in tune to what students need and what their interests are and what needs to be offered to help students be successful. So when I say grow, I don't necessarily mean like numbers. I just mean in focus maybe, and it's just become that much better. Mm -hmm. That's great. We, um, we certainly love to, love to hear that. We love growth and we want to keep growing, but you're right. Certainly don't want to ever lose that personal touch or that um, family feel and culture that we really strive to be, but um, we, we, we want to serve and help as many students as we can. So finding the balance of those two things are really important for, for us. Um, so, so Karen, I want to talk a little bit about internships because you said in the beginning of this, of this interview that that was really key for you to get that experience like right away. And I think that still is, that's still certainly true today. Our students thrive when they get that experience quickly. Um, whether it's working, whether it's a leadership position in a club, or whether it's an actual internship. How did you get that internship? And was it through a professor contact? Was it kind of on your own? Kind of what, what did that look like? And um, any, any advice for students who are out there seeking internships, you know, upcoming this semester? So I think it was through Diane Pivar, who was, you know, running the paralegal program at that time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember if I made that connection or not I'm going to say you know it, it was through her yeah um and I would recommend whether it's a leadership position position you know in a group or an actual you know job position that everyone take advantage of that you, you just learn so much by being involved and I really felt like for me when I had that internship again I was learning I didn't know anything about personal injury at that time um and for me, because I wanted to help people and I saw these people injured and I saw that they needed help and law was a way for me to help them, you know, kind of get through life after they've had such traumatic events. Mm -hmm. I knew for me after that first internship, like that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So, and I knew that was the type of law that I wanted to do. So for me, I was very lucky that the first one I did kind of, right. you know, kind of hooked me in and, but that's not always the case. Sure. So. But again, I would just recommend taking advantage, making those connections if you can. And, you know, I think, I don't think I got paid for that internship. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to be willing to, you know, bite the bullet a little bit and, you know, balance work and, and life. And to this day, I have to do that, right? <laughs> so it was a good life event as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you're, you're spot on with that. Um, you know, not everyone, like their first job, their first internship is going to be like 
the aha moment of this is what I want to do. You know, I know for, uh, for me personally, I had four internships when I was in college and two of them were horrible. Two of them were, were, were a lot better. And certainly um, it, it definitely, it definitely opens your eyes though, to what you do and what you don't like, which is really good. And the, the, idea, the idea about not getting paid is, is true. Sometimes you have to sacrifice that to get the experience to then hopefully, you know, obviously pay back and and yeah. And it's easy to say, I mean, everybody has different yes. life situations and mm -hmm. it's easy to say, oh, just bite the bullet. But to the extent that you can, the right. value you receive in doing that in the, the shorter term, I think ultimately pays off in the, the longer term. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, I think we have time for one more question. Professor Sims, do you want to kind of wrap us, wrap it up here with one more question for Karen? Um, I think we actually answered a lot of my questions, but uh, but you. Um, so I, I guess I would like to just focus more on one of the thing about going to law school itself, okay? Because I, I where did you go? To, you went to school um, locally. I went to Widener. Mm -hmm. You went to Widener, right? So uh, a lot of the students, um, you know, they asked me about the experience at law school, and I don't want to put you on the spot because I I think most attorneys won't talk very, really positively about that, you know, it certainly wasn't easy, I'll put it that way. So um, I try to give them, you know, we do these different kinds of uh, conferences and things like that about going to school and, and you know, the, the process and they, they get the process. But um, what, any advice you could give them while they're in college to think towards law school? Like, I, I'll give you an example. Like I say, you need to do well. You need to hit for A's. You don't just try to get a C in something because you will fail out. They fail out with their class. The first, they will fail out the first, you know, year of students. Some of them, a lot of them. So, um, some of my friends were going to come back, you know? So, uh, I mean, it, it, you know, like you really have to shoot for an A. Like that's what I tell them. But is there anything that comes to mind that you wish you knew when you went to law school? <laughs> So I think the thing that I learned pretty quickly that I wasn't expecting in law school was just understanding your time management. So um, that type of school requires a lot of time commitment. So I will say, you know, when I look at myself, I don't necessarily think I was the smartest person in law school, you know, but I know that I put in the time to be equal to those people, you know. Um, so I think if you are going to go to law school, you should be prepared for kind of adjusting your time commitment. It definitely is a type of career. And even now, um, I've benefited from learning that, you know, because you have to adjust projects, you have deadlines, you got to be in court and you can't be here. So I would say, you know, people should expect that, yes, you have to do well, but you also have to understand that if you don't understand something or a subject, you're going to need to put the time in to understand it. You can't just like, you know, skate by type of thing. So right. I would just say, you know, like anything, even, even at Manor, you know, it's, it's a time commitment. And when you don't understand something or struggle with something, you have to adjust your schedule and be willing to commit yourself, you know, to succeeding. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. I mean, they, I, I just like the fact that you're saying, you know, when it's in, you know, in law school, you do it is a lot of time and a lot of people, they're good at posing like they're doing the work They're at, they're asking these great questions in class. You're like, oh, they're brilliant. Wow. I don't know how, I don't know how they come up with that question. Well, that, that's what they fit. That's what they chose to do that night to look good in class. But you basically have to do the work behind that. It's not just what you're doing in class like you just you're actually learning the material <laughs> so right. I mean that's that's what I try to tell them because I think if they as matter really gives so many resources you know we have a learning center we work with the students all the time on writing and it, even in my class I, I I help them you know revise things to learn how to revise because that's a big thing in law and um you know I, I'm not saying oh wow that's really I'm so great I'm saying you know that that's what you need to do when you go to law school too you have to revise yourself you got to say I need to revise this sometimes 10 times you know and it's worth it and you know a lot of it also is t the test you only, you only you may only take one test in the semester that most schools still do that and so 
you you have to be you have to take practice tests. So that that issue comes up, you're sitting there writing away. You know, everybody else is just looking at it like I don't remember that. Um, so that, but, but it really is, it is rather, you know, it is somewhat competitive in a sense too, uh, that you, you know, you have to just do well, but you're really competing with yourself. Yeah. And that kind of brings us back to exactly how this started professor, which is, you know, manner gives you that foundation. The fact that you, you know, are teaching legal classes and someone presents something to you and you're saying to them, you got to go back and redo this. It's, it's that type of education that, prepared me for those next steps. It wasn't like, okay, here's a C and you're on your way. It was, hey, redo this. You know, it's the commitment. We're here to teach you, not just kind of, not that schools just pass you, but you know, you're here to teach you for real life things and for the next step. And had I not had that, you know, I could have easily gone to the law school and not made it. So um, I'm grateful for that. And I appreciate everything, you know, that Manor has had you know, to offer and continues to offer. So thank you. Well, yes, welcome. thank you. <laughs> thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you, Taryn, so much. And thank you for being uh, committed to, to Manor um, when you were a student and still today. I think I think you said you had so many good good nuggets in this interview. I really hope that it it resonates with our students, our current students, but then also some of maybe families who are thinking about joining us for this fall semester and for the semesters upcoming. Um, thank you all for tuning in. We are um, looking forward to more series and installments of our virtual alumni engagement series. We will be back in August with another alum from our veterinary technology program. And uh, thank you, Karen, so much for your time and look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you for having me. It's great seeing you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>